Hey, hey, this is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Hello, everybody. How's it going, Jared? Oh, look, all right. It's going okay. It's, it's going okay? Uh, it's going okay. So yeah. here's the question. I just want to get this off the... You guys still have COVID going on, right? We we do have a little bit of COVID going on at the moment, but it's it's um, it's like something that didn't just happen in the U.S. It it actually happened everywhere. all the way halfway across the country. It did. Okay, so it's not a hoax. No, it's true. We, yeah. We've definitely got like COVID is is in Victoria. It's taking a real stranglehold on Victoria again. And and um, Australia is not some kind of a puppet of us, so that this is just a matter of this happening just for our elections here in the U.S. this year. No. <laughs> okay, it's I just not. I just needed to confirm that because you know, based off of reasons, comments, based off of reasons that I see constantly posted, apparently this is just an us problem and not a world problem. So I just wanted oh. to make sure that that you in Australia and and to be sure, you are in Australia. This isn't us faking a moon landing or anything. No, no, I'm actually in in China. This is a, a Chinese studio. <laughs> It just looks very, very Australian here. And I have a voice filter on, and um, I'm actually AI. I am actually a Chinese host. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is good to know. All right, I just want yeah. to clear. I just want to clear that out because, you know, when you go on the Facebook and and you read comments of people that are actually you know you're friends with, but then you start reading comments and you kind of go, eh, I'm friends with this person. <laughs> and, and, and you gotta be honest, let me be clear here i don't just friend anybody that puts a request in no i actually have to know you and actually have to want to hear from you <laughs> yeah because facebook puts your stuff everywhere so you know, yes you yes. don't want to see junk in your feed me me too i i don't just follow anybody on facebook that you know i don't want my feed to be messed up no, I, I made that mistake of uh, where I had a couple of people um, that follow the show try and friend me on Facebook. And at first I was like, sure, why not? Mm -hmm. And I did. And within a week, I unfriended went, nope. them. Nope. <laughs> 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 well, I just realized, you know what? This is my personal business, not show business. Ooh. And uh, it, it just kind of got... And then I was seeing things in that was then popping up and filling up my feed. And I was like, I don't need to hear your nonsense. I don't even know you other than a screen username. So, bye bye. <laughs> yeah, no thank you. No thank you. No thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so today, folks, uh, in case you're wondering about the title of the show, which is "Let's Ride Bikes," uh, that's the old, uh, you know, ADD joke, where you know the kids, mom, 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 I want to. Can we watch this show? Can we? Let's ride bikes. You know. So it's. It could have also been called Squirrel. Squirrel. Same thing, you know. Mm. <laughs> uh, because we really, we don't have much pinball to talk about this week. And in case you're, we thought that we would, because of the old, uh, hey, there'll be an announcement mid-July. And mid-July got bumped because I guess it was supposed to coincide with the California Extreme uh, yeah. event that was going on. And that got bumped to August, and so now August 1st is when we're going to hear news from Zen. So we just kind of figured, hey, we want to be on the, uh, we, we want to pop in and say hi, but there's no point in us really talking much about it, right? Try, trying trying to do something pinball related at the moment is is really hard. It's, yeah. uh, it's not, there's not a lot to go on. We're, like, we, we will be dredging the bottom of the barrel very, very scrapily um <laughs> <laughs> to scrape it all off the bottom of the barrel and it would not really be a, a great show so, and and, um, and so so here's your pinball if i had to guess what they're going to talk about uh the new tables and probably something arcade one up related <laughs> and considering that uh good old deb flip jack danger himself is doing the hosting of that nature I'm thinking it's going to be more arcade one up and I'm going to guess they're going to reveal tables. I think so. Yeah. I, I don't really think if they get in Jack danger involved, he's not going to be sitting there with a controller playing. Well, like, he's he, gonna be I in don't front know if he's, machine. 
he might be on a machine. You're right. But yeah. more to the point, he's also not uh, one to do what we do, which is speculate and dig for information. Jack is there to actually announce things. Promote. And he's promote. very much <laughs> the host. Yeah, he's the MC essentially, for this whole event. So, oh, well, what, for California Street? Well, for the I, stuff. I read, if my recollection of the tweets are correct, Zen has been heavily, heavily involved in getting California Extreme to go remote. So they've invested a fair bit of time and or possibly money to actually make California Extreme an, an online event this year. Okay. There was one tweet that was like, oh, yeah, we, are, we this wouldn't be happening without Zen Studios. And I was going, oh, okay. So... I mean, it kind of makes sense because it's it's held up in Northern California, and that's where mm. Mel is, and that's, that's right. where John D, who was our guest two podcasts ago uh, mm -hmm. from from Arcade One Up. So yeah, um, makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. So that's our that's our speculation for the day, folks. Enjoy. Yeah, let's see what happens in uh, August. Um, I, I won't be staying up for the announcement because it's probably going to be mm, twelve o'clock my time in the morning <laughs> so I, I think i might just sleep and then read a little bit about it um the uh the following day or if the plants align we'll talk about it together on the podcast um, that's what i'm uh, planning on uh yeah. having happened that hopefully the announcement is prior to when we normally would do our podcast but even though we might just delay our podcast until later in the day so that we can actually finally Talk Sync about something. With a major news event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, That'd be nice, wouldn't it? The planets would really have to align, though, because that sort of stuff is just rare for us to be able to do. We've, we, we've dragged our season. feet so long that there's a gigantic trench behind us and you could plant seeds. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that being said, the only other bit of uh, pinball news that uh, we're going to touch upon is Jared informed me right before we started that he has some news directed specifically at uh, somebody that is a friend of the show and has been on the show before. Jared, go ahead. Friend of the show, Pinball Wiz. Um, I knocked you off the the local top spot leaderboards on um, Savecracker. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I had a really, really big game on that one. Probably the largest, the, the longest and largest game I've had on Savecracker for a very long time and uh i think it was in the order of 12 million what? on standard games 12 million on safe cracker is no mean feat as pinball Wiz probably will attest because uh, yeah it's very very hard to get that score it's okay so so how many times did you raid the vault or get a coin um, I, I should say <laughs> I had a re it started off really terribly. I didn't even get to the vault the first board game through. Um, and I went, okay, well, you know, the ball, I think I got dumped out the dog. So the dog got me and I went, okay, well, I'll try and shoot the dog, uh, like shoot the um, the bank again to get back into the board game. Missed that, shot the ramp, got um, TNT multiball, um, which originally I was going, that's just great. That's going to have to, I'll have to restart the board game again, whatever. Um, but it turns out that that's kind of really important for getting high scores in the game because what it does is it builds your time back up again, doesn't it? As you start yeah. breaking things, it gives you a whole lot of uh, clock time again, which, you know, if you think it runs fast when you first start the game, you're getting about five seconds per clock tile um, <laughs> in, when you start rebuilding that clock. In, in a it, lot of ways, it's kind of time. like uh, uh, when you play Pac-Man and after the first couple of power dots or like you get onto the next couple of mazes, all of a sudden there's only one second before the ghosts turn back to normal and it's yeah. useless. So yeah, yeah, that's safe cracker. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, is, it is brutal when you're trying to relight things. But, you know, I, I managed to get back into the vault again. I got a vault token. Um, and then I knew I was doing all right because... I entered the vault again and I got a a vault credit. Ooh. Um, so not a vault token. So it, it stops paying out tokens when you have so many vault entries, obviously, so the operator doesn't get fleeced of all wow, these tokens. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah. Makes sense. So you get basically, you get like a, a essentially a salt the vault credit um, lined up uh, in the game. So I went, ooh, that's something I've never seen before on the game. So, um, and I'm sure something that... Uh, that pinball whiz would have seen before with the score that he got but yeah it's it was uh, a massive game and um 
it's funny because I hadn't played pinball for a very long time. I'd sort of like been focusing on other games, which we'll talk about later on in the show um, when we're talking about the things we, we've been doing and playing. But um, Translation, spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, no, this is, just, this is just preloading the show. Um, you know, it's good to lay out so people don't go, well, this is boring as hell. I'm going to go. <laughs> so it's good to give them a preview. How dare they out. if they think that we're a boring ship? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. Um, so, yeah, that was We don't was have fun. this many subscribers. Just Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing I did was I thought, all right, let's go for a little tour around the um, the Williams collection on, um, on Steam. So I played Monster Bash, had a really good... I got Monsters of Rock on that and got the award, which I hadn't got yet. Like the, um, you know, the you start the Monsters yeah. of Rock event, which is cool. Um, I started realizing, you know, that pinball is a lot more fun when you, I was reminded, I should say, that pinball is a lot more fun when you exercise control. And it, it was just more like I was doing everything right. I was trapping up balls and I was making the shots deliberately. And it, it's kind and of like if, you know, have some patience. <laughs> and, yeah, and don't good don't just like don't don't play it like a shoot 'em up. Play it like a pinball machine. And I think for, for a lot of the time, I was playing it like a, a shoot 'em up. Like you know, just uh, twitch, twitch, twitch. Have to like flick everything and play everything. And it's a very different play style. Like you have to do that in shoot 'em ups. But in pinball, it's it's all about control. It's about the control. So yeah, it was a good reminder of that, and good to realize that you know. Also, too, I wasn't playing it on you know the tournament settings, or sorry, the uh, the classic settings. I was just playing it on Zen mode because well, that, it's fun. You gotta do. I do that now and then. I'll hop onto Zen mode because it just makes you feel good, and suddenly you feel like you're a pinball god, and it just kind of boosts your confidence, and you get farther in the game, and it's kind of like. You know what? Even though I'm, I'm kind of cheating, it's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, and I was having a lot of fun. Like Safe Cracker is like that game. When I was playing that thing back when it was in Time Zone in Albert Street here in Brisbane, that thing, uh, it took so much of my money when I was a young one. Uh, it's designed to fleece you of your dollars. It probably, I would think, more than an 80s pinball machine, actually. It is equal to an 80s pinball machine in its brutality. Because it's timed and like you're really only getting a guaranteed playtime of about a minute and a half if you suck. And back then I was okay at pinball, but it was like set up really hard um, because I didn't want to be paying out tokens, of course. So, you know, it was, it was difficult to play. So the, the tokens that I earned from that machine were hard fought. Uh, so, yeah, it was, uh, it was, yeah. Very, very difficult, but it was good. It was good to actually have that experience last night and have actually some good games in pinball and be reminded about why you want to play pinball yeah. and um, and why you enjoy it. Because for a while there, I honestly, I really wasn't enjoying playing pinball. I've been, uh, and unfortunately, it's going to stop for a little while, but uh, I've been doing a weekly, wait, is it weekly? Well, yeah, it's a weekly tournament, but it's a season of tables uh, which would amount to five or six uh, plays, so five or six weeks. But anyway, it was a tournament hosted by uh, on Reddit uh, by this guy by the name of David Six, uh, mm. Roman numeral Six. And he's been doing a really awesome... If you guys remember when we were doing Table of the Week and Game of the Month, mm. uh, or, or Tournament of the Month, excuse me, that's what it was. Um, he's doing that, but he's using Zen, obviously, to collect the data which is nice, and then entering that into his spreadsheet. But basically yeah. what's been going on is he picks... Uh, he's only been playing Williams tables and picks five tables and then a bonus table in case you missed a week. Um, or if you play all six weeks, then it's the, whatever your top five uh, position scoring positions are. Um, That's a really good way of doing it. It is, it is. And it's nice because that way you don't feel like you absolutely positively have to be there every week. Um, mm. And it's 10 plays set up on Classic Arcade, uh, and and that's it. And it's been a pretty competitive uh, group. There's a couple of guys on there that just do monster scores, and they're battling it out. Me, I'm always battle battling it out with Wilbers, um, mm -hmm. who often just pops up in our uh, comments section. And yes. this past time, I beat him by one point, so I was very happy uh, for the placement <laughs> in the tournament. Um, mm -hmm. And, I mean, my goal has just been trying to be top 10. 
uh, if I can get into the top 10. And usually there's a, about 45 players or so. So, I yeah. mean, it's, it's a fairly robust, robust group. As soon as that week's game ends, another guy who is an Xbox user, and so it's harder to find his because you actually have to enter in his name into the filter for finding uh, tournaments, but he goes by the name of Coaster Wizard. And Coaster Wizard runs his tournament using the same tournament that just was, but doing it with the Zen physics, and he sets up uh, what the uh, passive upgrades are for the table. Okay, yeah, right. Um, and that particular tournament, I'm numero uno right now. <laughs> so apparently I'm really good at the <laughs> at the Zen versions, and I'm just kind of, eh, I mean, you know, middle of the pack. Uh, well, better than middle of the pack. With the classics. With the classics, yeah. 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 Um, but it's fun because, again, you get your butt kicked uh, in the one arena and then you hop on with the fun physics and you kind of feel like a pinball god after the, a week of getting thrashed about. So, yeah. I encourage it's, it's everybody, if good. you can, uh, he's going on, he's taking a break right now because he says he's moving, so it's going to be about a month. But hop onto Reddit, go to the Pinball FX3 uh, subreddit, and uh, basically subscribe to that subreddit and. In there, you're going to find his posts about his Reddit tournament. And just go ahead and subscribe to that right now and be ready for when the next bit goes. Because it's a good amount of fun and it adds that competition. And that's how I've been playing pinball, um, mm. just by doing that. I think that it would actually give you the focus you need to actually motivate you to start the computer up each it does. week and, and, and do it. Otherwise, like I haven't really found much of a draw back to the game. You know, obviously, because there's not a lot of content floating around for it, but um, it, it's just, you know, it, it just feels like oh, I'm just going to go and play pinball for a bit, which is, you know, fine. You do that, but yeah, there's no real drive for it. So the tournaments will give you that structure you need to actually want to turn it on and want to participate. And, you know, playing pinball is best done with people. That's what know. the uh, machine says. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> pinball is more fun with. Uh, what, we, what, what, how did that phrase go exactly? It was like, pinball is more fun when with others or competitive. I don't know. Anyway, I know it used to yeah. be on a couple of machines. I don't know who did that. The Dada East one said participate in local tournaments. And they even had a like a PAPA. I remember now. I was going, what is PAPA? There it is. Yes, it's I, more fun to compete. That's it's what, more uh, fun to compete. That's what Dave put on in the uh, comments section of our uh, live Twitch stream, which if you were watching... The live Twitch stream when we record these, then you too can comment. Uh, Dave, do you happen to know uh, what machine that was slapped on? What uh, was that? Bally Williams, Gottlieb, Daddy Eastern, who feel free to add in. Um, okay, while we wait for that answer, though, because I know a Google search is coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me Google that for you. Well, let's Google that. Uh, let's move on because, you know, since not playing pinball, that's what we've been doing. Uh, mm. We're going to talk about. Before we get to <laughs> number one, how did you know I was Googling? Because I could tell, Dave, <laughs> it was taking time. It clearly was not the top of your head. Um, That's right. <laughs> uh, things that uh, we've been viewing since last we talked, because I've viewed a whole bunch. How about you, Jared? Have you been watching TV? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Lots of TV, but nothing that's interesting. <laughs> Look, yeah. I'm just thankful that, that, that this morning I woke up at 9 a.m. and I was able to watch a basketball game scrimmage because the NBA is coming back on the first. So I was happy about that. Um, and Dis at, at Disneyland World. Yes, at, right? at uh, yes in Orlando at Disney World. Yeah, yeah. in the yeah. bubble. Um, in the bubble. <laughs> that's what they call it, in the bubble. All um, right. Well, because that's what they're treating it like, is once you enter the bubble, you do not leave the bubble and nobody comes into the bubble. So therefore, everybody quarantined before they going into the bubble then they went into the bubble and then they quarantined again and made sure that everybody was clear and now they're you know 99.9% .9 sure that nobody's going to get sick but they still test every day they still social distance they still wear masks when needed um, mm. but in unless they're actually playing the basketball game then obviously they're not playing with masks because that would be really hard yeah it would be a little bit difficult uh, word is it's a stern thing all right. It is a Stern thing, yeah. But and, I, yeah, I do remember that Stern like in the Data East days. I do remember seeing participate in local tournaments on the DMDs of a lot of Data East games, and I also remember that it was it actually used to have Papa on there as well, um, all the way back then. So it was well, like, almost like an advertisement um, for for Papa 
on the machines back then. I mean, they're not wrong. It's definitely more fun to compete. It is. It's just a fact. Um, yeah, so I've been uh, killing Netflix. Mm. <laughs> um, Teaching it a few things, seeing if you could take a punch. You know, putting it through its paces. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a little bit too much time on my hands. Um, so let's mm. see. Here's These are just the series that I've binged. Uh, second season of Hannah. All three seasons of Dark, which is a German show. Yeah, that's how desperate I was. I'm starting to watch foreign language TV shows. Um, that thing is, if you like time travel, you're going to kind of hate time travel after this because it is right. dead serious. Like, no humor whatsoever. It doesn't have fun with time travel. It instead focuses on the paradox of time travel. Oh. All and the bad just stuff. twists it all into a little knot until your brain goes. <laughs> oh, wow. And it's three seasons. That's all it is. Three seasons. But, oh, my God, thank God it's only three seasons. Because, seriously, I, I would get jealous. Oh, oh, just absolutely. My, my, you know, the brain matter was just oozing out of my ears afterwards. Um, <laughs> Way too much science. <laughs> <laughs> So I had to I had to uh, to kind of go into lighter fare after that. I watched uh, first season. Well, it just came out. Um, new show, uh, but show called Warrior Nun. Guess what that's about? Um, nuns of the Warriors. Yeah. Um, hey, <laughs> that's up? what it says on the box. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, I watched a show called Cursed, which is a retelling of the Arthurian legend, but it's basically prior to Arthur even going on his quest, it's all about the gal that's going to become the lady in the lake. And she's got her hands on Excalibur. And Merlin doesn't even have magic right now because he's kind of been stripped of it. And I don't know. It was it was interesting. It's based off of a uh, Frank Miller comic. Uh, right. But it uh, it's kind of reminded me of more fluffy fare. <laughs> like it never quite goes. Uh, it's not game of Thrones is basically is what I should say. Um, right. It's not deep storytelling, but it's interesting storytelling. So uh, apparently I'm just noticing here that uh good friend, Ksenia, uh apparently didn't like it when I said that I was watching a German show and that's how desperate I was. Cause he wrote in all caps. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, and then I watched the uh, first season of Umbrella Academy because the second season's about to come out. So yeah, I did all that in like two weeks, <laughs> which is right. many. I don't even know how I fit a that many. Watching. I don't know how I fit that many hours of TV in. And then movies because I wasn't done there. I watched um, Old Guard, which is the Charlize Theron movie. Uh, Greyhound, which is kind of interesting. That's uh, Tom Hanks. World War II, crossing between crossing the Atlantic, uh, escorting ships with the uh, U-boats, you know, laying in wait, which was rather interesting. Right. Uh, Hamilton, and I'm not a musical guy, but I work at Disneyland, and people won't shut up about that thing. So I figured I needed to watch it. <laughs> and hey, it turns out it's pretty good. Um, oh, right, okay. Cool. <laughs> and then uh, I watched a movie called Palm Springs, which is with uh, Andy Samberg, uh, and it's his lonely guy or lonely island crew. Uh, so it's comedy. Think of it as Groundhog Day, but more adult version. Okay. So real quickly, they understand it's Groundhog Day, and then they just mess with that. So it's like they understand the premise, and they're going to tweak it even further. So that's kind of fun. Right. That's cool. um, and yeah. then I watched, uh, let's see, 3D movies. Watched The Meg in 3D. And if you've never seen The Meg, have you seen The Meg, Jared? That's a giant shark movie. Oh, is... Jason Statham. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. I, I don't think I would have seen that. It's a... <laughs> you lost me at Jason Statham, I oh, think. Oh, I love Statham. <laughs> it's, a, it's a silly, silly movie that knows it's silly and therefore makes it way better because it's not taking right. itself seriously. And yeah. I got to say, in 3D, that was... Even better. No, I don't usually. Right. I don't say that often. That the 3D makes anything better, but that was it. It, it, it earns its stripes on that. And then I watched uh, Life of Pi in 3D, which that's like demo real material. 
Right. Because <laughs> I, I, I'd seen the movie before, and I just kind of went, eh, whatever. And then while I watched it in 3D, it was like, ooh, now I understand what the big deal is, because damn, he used it. Um, right. So it was amazing. Yeah. And then, uh, last but not least, currently I'm watching, uh, so I'm done with the German show. Now I'm into a Russian show. <laughs> Russian show? Russian show. Mm. Never thought I'd be watching one of those. It's called Better Than Us. And interesting concept, which is it takes place in the future. Bots are everywhere, uh, mm. you know, to help. Uh, they obviously follow the three laws of robotics. Right. And... Uh, the bots are anything from your standard just it looks clearly like a robot to uncanny human... valley stuff no not well not, I guess you could call it uncanny valley they clearly look like robots their movements oh, right. are stiff they look kind of plasticky um, they're not going to fool anybody as being real but not quite uncanny valley then yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but one gets introduced as a prototype that can its whole purpose is to read human emotions and react to human emotions. And the laws of robotics have been removed from it. So therefore, it's actually able to kill. And it sounds I, like iRobot or riffing off iRobot. It kind of. It's kind of a riff on a lot of your robotics uh, themes. And I thought, oh, this is right up my alley. So I've been watching Because I really enjoyed iRobot as a premise. Like, Yeah, as a premise, it's, 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 it's interesting, yeah. Um, hmm. And I just watched iRobot recently, too. But, uh, so this was right up my alley. And I was like, yeah, let's go for this. Let's watch this. Uh, unfortunately, it's turning out to be more like a soap opera. <laughs> oh, it's, okay. I think it's 16 episodes long. It's padded. It could have been eight episodes and been tight and bone pulled. And really good. Really good. Yeah. And instead, it's just like, oh, the robot got kidnapped again, or the, oh, the guy's family got kidnapped again. Oh, geez, Louise, can you people just like <laughs> how many times can the, we? At, at one can point, can we wrap this up? Oh, please. Where, where I really started to uh, to to get concerned was all of a sudden there was going to be a competition, a because basically this robotics factory they want to uh, get their robots. Uh, there's a state program where basically it's we're going to retire everybody early and we'll let the robots do your jobs for those people that re retire. So it's work until you're like 45 and then you don't have to work anymore. We'll pay your retirement and the robots will do the rest of the work that you normally would have continued to do. And okay. so they want to introduce these new robots because it'll be like, well, these can do what humans can do with that same, you know, same manner. And so it's a really big contract. And so they've imported in this one prototype uh, that was kind of illegal for them to get, uh, and then it quickly gets uh, interesting. It, well. well, I shouldn't say the robot all of a sudden uh, latches onto a little girl, and then attaches to the dad, and then imprints itself as it now being part of their family, and so then it will protect its family at all cost. So again, interesting premise, but mm. at one point it literally because the the robots company was bidding for the contract they were going to have this robot competition like American Idol. And I just went, oh my <laughs> God. Oh no, <laughs> please. Really? Yeah. So uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, nah. I'm going to, I'm going to finish this one out uh, just cause I've gotten this far, but if it has a second season then God, I hope not. I'm not going to watch the second season. <laughs> it's just too much to ask of me. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead, folks. Uh, let's see. Over in the comments section, what do we got here? We have somebody says, have you seen Hollywood? No, I haven't seen Hollywood. I think that's a Ryan Murphy production. I'm done with Ryan Murphy, um, partly because I've worked on a few Ryan Murphy shows, and I know how the sausage gets made, and I realize that that's why I don't like a lot of his shows. Not because I was there, but because I see how the process is and realize it's not a good process. <laughs> It's a bad sausage. <laughs> it's bad sausage. Sometimes the sausage is good. Sometimes the sausage is really horrible. Yeah, gristly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what else do we got here in the comments? Anybody poking up? If it's movies, somebody said Disney Plus they've gotten recently. And uh, yeah, that's about all that we've seen there. Well, you big <laughs> sausage. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, you go ahead and uh, pop in our uh, Twitch comments. Yeah, not you at YouTube. Although you could, you'll be late to it. But Yeah, you'll be um, late. You can still comment, though. We'll read them. You, you can't. Yeah, we do read them. We do respond. But yeah. uh, as I've been well, watching... Chris does. Yeah. It, 
yeah, it's me. It's not Jared. <laughs> no, I hate, oh my God, because of all the YouTube videos that I've been watching. I really, really loathe the ones that start right, right off the bat. They start the video and be like, make sure you comment and smash that like button. It's like, Shut the hell up. <laughs> it's like, what first is the opening <laughs> opening thing? Oh, my God. But that no being way. said, we should mention, because we have uh, uh, kind of a sponsor. They're kind of sponsoring all pinball broadcasts. Which is really good of them. Which is really good of them. And so we're going to make mention of them. Uh, Twip, which is This Week in Pinball. Uh, it's a site that basically is an, uh, an aggregate of what is going on in pinball for that week. Mm. Um, and they have been really supportive of all of us that do uh, podcasts or streaming video or vlogs about pinball. Uh, we mentioned on our Twitter feed before to kind of vote us up so that we can appear on the front pages of sites that have gotten reviewed rather than not being reviewed. You guys did that. Um, if you so haven't, thank you for that. Yeah, if you haven't done that, you know, feel free to. But um, no, give him a support. He even gives out awards every year called the Twippies. Um, yeah. And uh, Jack Danger all... normally takes out the one for uh, yeah for streaming. <laughs> straight, yeah, straight up. <laughs> goddamn dead flip. Um, yeah, it's too good. Too good. <laughs> uh, but anyway, go check out their site and uh, see what you see. It's, it's worth a look. I even wrote an article way back when that. Uh, I still link people to, which was all about the loss of license uh, or the sw switching of license of the Williams from uh, Farsight over to Zen. So that's where mm. that is. Yeah. Uh, hold on. What's this? Have you tried the Oktoberfest in Finland that you can play remotely? Oh, the pinball machine? Uh, no. no. I haven't. No. <laughs> I didn't that, even know about I, this. I wouldn't do that because, well, latency. <laughs> On the Australian internet would mean I would be draining in five seconds. So it seems I'll lose the ball. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's it's but that's a great idea. It's an interesting concept. Yeah. Certainly. I don't know. That would be weird. I'll look it up. Yeah. I'm, I might just look it up just for the fact that I've not played Oktoberfest. Have you have you done it, Jay William? He gave it a go. There and are there prizes. are prizes. Wow, wow. prizes. A it's new probably. car! Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> suddenly, <laughs> suddenly, I'm having those uh, Bally Game Show or Smash TV uh, pop into my head. Um, it's all about the game show with Keith McTeeve. <laughs> Mugs and Steins, very good. Oh, all right. That's, I'm trying that's to think, all good. Maybe I have played October. That's uh, is that uh, American Pinball? The, yeah, that's right. I played their Houdini. I didn't like Houdini. It's hmm. The tables play slower. They're not fast tables, but mm. the shooting lanes are narrow. I mean, ridiculously yeah. narrow. And so half the time, all you're doing is bouncing the ball off posts and not having the ball go anywhere. And I didn't care for that. Um, and I want to say that I did play Oktoberfest, maybe, unless there's another one that they had before Houdini. I don't know. Or maybe it was, I don't know. I know I've played yeah. two of theirs. I still yeah, want to I, give... I, I really, really want to play Big Lebowski. American Pinball also do Hot Wheels as well. So Dude, that looks pretty sweet. I do gotta there's say. There's no loops. The, the thing that people are saying about it, though, there's no, there's no loops. It, it took that a homebrew... It actually took a, home, um, a homebrew pinball developer who's actually making a Sonic spinball table okay. to actually put a full-on loop in a pinball game. Um, and that's because it certainly oversight. needs a loop. There is no doubt about it. That's a, a... it's got to have a loop. Yeah, come on, it's Hot Wheels. Yeah, it's, Hot Wheels trademark is the loop. Like that's a massive oversight. But it still looks Anyhow. better than Mustang. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah. because there's an actual reason to have little toy cars on your table for this one. <laughs> that that literally right. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, okay, let's talk about though. What, since we've talked about my viewing, which was massive, obviously, uh, what are we playing, Jared? I'll let you well, go because my list is rather large. I'm playing some. I've caught on to a couple of really good shoot 'em ups, and also something that's pinball related. So we'll do the shoot 'em ups first. So 
for a while on my wish list. On my wish list, I've had um, Darius Burst Chronicle Saviors um, wish list, and it, it, with the Steam sale recently, it came down to a reasonably affordable price because this game's expensive, and there's a reason for that because it's really, really big <laughs> for a shoot 'em up. So what they've done is they've taken the full-on Darius Burst um, arcade release, and they've done a complete like-for-like like port over to Steam. So this is the big dedicated arcade, which probably never really made it out here. It was big in Japan, but it was like this massive, super widescreen display um, uh, that was uh, sort of big and tighter games back in the arcade at one point. But you actually sat down in a booth. It supported four players, and you could actually do a four-player Darius Burst game Um fighting all the fish bosses that are in the game because that's what Darius is all about. It's all about the fish bosses at the end. And they're very hard. So they they ported that over so you can play that for, on free play as much as you want and get killed over and over again like me. Um, or you can play the CS, the Chronicle Saviors version of it, which is like a, almost like a goal-based progression through the levels that are already in Darius Burst, the arcade version. But they rather than having it presented on a really huge widescreen, they've zoomed in on certain parts of the level. So you play through these certain parts of the level and then go and fight a big fish boss at the end. Um, and it's it's an incredible game. Um, it's got a, an amazing soundtrack. And um, the the levels, the, the CS, the Chronicle Saviors like play style that you play in, it actually teaches you how to fight the bosses, which you need to know because these bosses are brutal. They've got massive lasers. They've got um, bullet hell, basically, that come at you. Um, it's I think Darius Burst, for people who know the bullet hell genre, it's like a, a somewhat accessible version of bullet hell. There are some bullet hell games that you, you just got no hope. Well, I don't. I'm not that good at them. I'm but this one at least you at them. <laughs> because I get my least... I get my bullets confused with their bullets and my ship confused with everybody else's ship and the next thing I know I've crashed and I'm like wait I thought I was over here and yet I crashed over here oh boy <laughs> yeah and and we did and then I uh, then your your ship gets respawned back in the game and you're dead again like it, it's brutal and then so, God forbid if you play with another person and you got two ships oh, on the screen because then you, and, and and then you like you swap side and oh my God it's game over for me instantly the thing with the thing with Darius Burst and a lot of the, the Darius games is the, the idea with it is you can actually flip your ship around. So you've, you're, you're shooting forwards and backwards. So you actually rotate your ship with a button. And that's important because the, the boss changes sides. So you have to fly over the other side of the screen and shoot this way at him. Basically. So almost like a Defender. Yeah, it is. It's okay. quite like that. Um, yeah, exactly like in Defender, uh, Xenia. Um, so it's a really challenging play style and like the 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 bosses themselves are really interesting to look at because they're all fish-like creatures and they've got they're really detailed and they're just loaded with cannons and guns and bullets and stuff like they even flick off their scales at you and the scales are bullets so really inventive boss um like mega boss battles in this game so i would highly recommend wishlisting this one and wait until it comes on sale later on in the year and get it because once you've got the core Darius Burst game, you can also download a whole lot of other retro um, Taito shoot 'em ups like Raystorm, for example. If anyone's a, a shoot 'em up fan, they'll know um, Raystorm. It was called, uh, it's called different things in different markets, but Raystorm, I think, is what it was called down here. But it's that one with the, it's a top scrolling um, shoot 'em up with um, all about the rays that like target the ships below you and you lock on. It's a lock on weapon game. Mm. And um, it was massive in the arcades when I was in the arcades and I loved it. So you can basically buy this, the, buy the game and play it through Darius Birth, uh, Darius Birth CS, but it's been upscaled and remastered. So you can, you can just go nuts with all the, um, the DLC in this game as well. It's, it's really a great package if you like shoot 'em ups. So do that one. And also, if you want a really challenging shoot 'em up which which has a really interesting play mechanic, uh, you can get another one called Para, but Power Rumi. And it's a really inventive shoot 'em up because you've got uh, on your Steam control, you've got your three buttons, right? So your X, A, and B. So each one of these does a different color of um, laser. 
and depending on the enemy you can either drain their energy or you can attack them hard um with it so you've got to choose the right color for the enemy whether you want to drain it or whether you want to attack them hard and it's a really really challenging play mechanic um i don't, I don't have that kind of controller jared you, you, oh well you could do it with that one <laughs> you, I, I think it would support that one yeah so <laughs> actually it's, it's, i, I it's, do have i do have a 360 controller i hate using it yeah it's just me I, it, it's an odd one um uh but the, the the game itself is amazing it uses um unity i think is its engine and it's just like the visuals are insane on it if you've got a decent video card yeah it's very pretty um and it's really quite challenging as well it's not bullet hell but the mechanics of the game make it really challenging because you, you're not just shooting things i mean you can shoot things but you're not going to win the game if you do you have to actually be quite strategic on what weapon you use and what bosses and that takes a little while to learn so from an accessibility perspective i haven't really been playing that one as much as darius burst because darius burst is just press and hold that fire button and don't die and that's the sort of shoot up <laughs> that i really like right <laughs> <laughs> just, tighten that sphincter across your fingers go yeah, that's pretty much it so yeah they're the two shoot 'em ups i got but the other one that i got is an is an interesting take on pinball and it's called super highball now i i found out about this game from the um digital pinball fans um, forum because somebody posted about it um the idea behind the game uh is you're using flippers to make your way through essentially what is a puzzle level um so it's it's it still rolls like a pinball okay i um, think i saw the demo or, or video of yeah. this it, it in some respects it reminds me of pinout but it's a little bit but it's kind pinout. of like next generation of that the real it is it's very much next generation and pinout where pinout was just more like flipping up the screen this is flipping really, all over the screen <laughs> it's flipping all over the screen and the thing with um this game is that it only lets you use the analog triggers in the game and there's a reason for that because the flippers aren't like an on off flipper they're a variable pitch flipper so oh. the idea is you can't just like flip like normally like you would in a pinball game to move through the levels you actually have to think about the angle of the flipper to actually get you through the level which makes it really really challenging um <laughs> you know it's really challenging because the achievements in the game are based on you dying so how many times have you died in this game well you get an unlock for that you get an achievement unlock <laughs> so oh my god that kind of frames frames what this is all about for you and it's it is a really really hard puzzle game the the pinball aesthetics themselves um the, they're okay but the just the sheer difficulty of it and the fact it's like um it's more like a twitch style puzzle game whereas like not twitch as in the stream service but like a quick reactions you need to know how the level's built so you can actually get through it really fast it's designed for you to actually play the game over and over and over right again. so so die over and over and, and any small increment is a victory basically and the, the good thing about it is the design is being smart and he's put regular checkpoints in there so you get through a really difficult bit and then there's a respawn point for you after that really horrible part so it's not frustrating from that perspective. It's just, it's just really difficult. <laughs> and, and I got to the point where I, I was determined to finish it, but at the end of it, like you can go and like go through and not die once, <laughs> not die <laughs> once. whatever, mate. Like there's not even a, there's not even a hope that I would not die once in this game. It is just very difficult. But if you, if you like puzzle games and you like, the pinball aesthetic then this one might be worthwhile checking out if if it's on sale like it's it's interesting it's in early access at the moment and i think it's going to get more levels as the 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 time goes on he does seem to be actively developing it so check it out see what you like i think there is a demo available you don't have to buy the full game you can just try a level demo and see see if it's up your alley um so give it a go you might like it um super highball give it a go Instead of super low ball, which is what old guys have. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> me, well, the newest thing that I just did, I have a, a good buddy of mine who has been begging me and begging me to play Witcher 3. 
Um, he thought I would start playing after I watched the Witcher series. I didn't. I enjoyed it, but I was like, I just don't really want to do an RPG. And uh, lately I've been in the mood to play something, and I was like, what am I going to play that's more long form? And so I was like, okay, fine. I'll play Witcher 3. Uh, but the caveat is he's been refusing to watch Cowboy Bebop, so I said, I'll play Witcher 3 if you watch Cowboy Bebop, so we'll see if he keeps his end of the bargain or not. Um, so I just downloaded that and have been uh, just getting into it um, and trying to remember that it's an RPG. There's supposed to be lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of dialogue and, <laughs> yes, collect things. Um, which is, I've just not been in that headspace for a very long time. So that's kind of tricky for me to get into. But the other thing um, is that I've been messing with the old uh, one-up cabinet that I've been borrowing a long time. Uh, what have you been doing with that? Well, I might have downloaded a few games. <laughs> Off the internet. As, as is, yeah, you know, because, you know, it is running MAME. And, yeah, right. You know. Uh, <laughs> I, so, I, I, did, I hadn't wanted to go down this rabbit hole, part in, partly because, again, I'm just borrowing this, and the guy that I'm borrowing it from uh, made a big... All the games that he had on it already were all his, legally owned, he purchased. and uh, But, like, he'd purchased cartridges of you know Sega Genesis Nintendo and then he was ripping them into digital format and then putting them on here rather than just going to a main site and downloading well he the was doing the thing. full tomato no he was doing oh, the was... full tomato to say wow. I personally legally did it the way that you're legally allowed to rather than just grabbing it easily and quickly off the internet um but in terms of and so we you know, his his cabinet, it's got it broken down into, like I said, Sega Master System, Genesis, uh, NES, Super NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, uh, PlayStation, PlayStation 2. Um, trying to think if there's any other consoles. Oh, uh, then Steam um, mm -hmm. or Windows, as he put it. Uh, so that's where I then wound up importing all of my pinball onto this thing uh, because it does have side flipper buttons that he installed. Mm. And uh, and then he's got the arcade, so your regular ROM game, arcade games. Mm. And now he had some on here to begin with that, like I said, he had, you know. So because it's a Street Fighter II cabinet, uh, he already owned the three Street Fighter games that come with the arcade one up. Um, right. So, okay. So it's what is it? Street Fighter Championship Edition Turbo and Super Turbo, I believe, are the are the three there. Uh, and then he had also bought uh, Asteroids, Defender, Joust, uh, Pac-Man, Pac-Man Plus. That was it for those. He had... Uh, uh, oh, and Gauntlet. Um, okay. He, he had on there, like part of his purchases uh, was Rampage and uh, Tempest. But the... Ver he was saying that it was the version of MAME that he was running that wasn't allowing them to function. Um, so even though we legally owned it, the MAME was saying, no, it doesn't work, and was a bad version. So we couldn't run those two games. Well, I started playing a lot of Pac-Man and enjoying Pac-Man, and then that got me going, but I'd really like to play Ms. Pac-Man. And he had Ms. Pac-Man in one of these, like he owns all of the uh, Midway arcade and Namco Museum uh, discs that were on PlayStation and uh, mainly on PlayStation and Genesis had one also. Right. Uh, and so I was having to go into those, wait for the disc to load or, or the virtual disc to load and then go through all the god awful menu systems that are in a PlayStation <laughs> 2. God, they're, oh. they're terrible, aren't they? Oh my God. When you... You're like, all I want to do is play the game. I don't want to go through your virtual museum that takes me 30 seconds, and then i got to rotate the machines, and, oh, no, that machine's locked because I didn't get a high score on this machine over here yet. Oh, just kill me. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is hard. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I kind of was like, well, maybe I'll 
I'll find the Ms. Pac-Man meme. And just put oh, that yeah. on there. We'll just try that. Give it a go. We'll yeah. give it a go. So I tried that, and what do you know? Hey, it worked really good. And now I can literally, from the time I push the start button on the cabinet to the time I'm playing is 15 seconds. So it's the same as dropping in a quarter, more or less. Um, and that was great. And then that got me going, well, there might be... Why don't we try looking for a ROM and get uh, Rampage working properly? Uh, I couldn't get regular Rampage working properly, but I could get Rampage World Tour working properly. So I was like, nay, there we go. We'll do that. And then I was like, well, let's try and get Tempest up and running. And it turns out that it's one of these things where you have to have all the ROMs, and it reads from all the ROMs at the same time in order to make the game work. So I got the game working, but that's when I discovered you need a spinner wheel. <laughs> you, oh. you you cannot play Tempest with just a eight eight trigger eight uh, joystick eight way joystick doesn't work because you yes you can make it work you know go left or right and it goes around left or right but it goes boom, 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 like really fast it, you can't oh, right. finesse it to each of the individual sections like you should be able to it really just jumps to the the quadrant of the controller right yeah yeah, yeah. so that's uh, hard i mean i mean and and it's at this point that i realized how we have gotten so used to these analog sticks just expect them to do everything because they're analog they can be steering wheels they can be uh you know spinny discs they can do whatever we need them to do and they'll register that degree of, you know, slow or fast, depending on how hard you do it. And I'm so used to just expecting that, that when I went and programmed in the controllers for Tempest, I figured, oh, this will be nothing. It'll work great. And then, nope, you need, the, the ROMs don't understand this concept of uh, slowing down based off of maybe how hard you press or something like that. It doesn't work that way. So right. I, in order to get it to actually function, I would need to buy a spinner control. Uh, so that immediately, in my mind, started going, well, I guess I'm not going to be downloading Arkanoid and I'm not going to be downloading uh, any racing game because, you know, right. without a steering wheel. Um, and then I realized I probably shouldn't download anything like, you know, Marble Madness or anything that's a trackball game, you know, Missile Command or Centipede because it's going to run into the exact same, exact same issue on that. Right. But... I did start going and going, well, what games do I remember? What games do I want to play? So I put a notice out on the, uh, on the various forums saying, hey, what, uh, what game should I pl- uh, download into this cab? What are the classics that I should have that I remember? And immediately people started like basically any game that they could think of they threw up there, which I don't want to yeah. do because I don't... The idea of one of these cabinets, and I think we've talked about this before, there gets to be a certain point where you have so many choices that you then don't make a choice at all of what to play. And so I was going to be a little bit picky. Um, Right. Well, now I have 57 different titles there, and that's not including the Neo Geo titles that were already on. (laughs) Right. So so for those that have been paying attention, I thought I might run through... uh, Real quick on on what I added. Uh, hold on, looking over here. So mouse works for Arkanoid. Yeah, mouse does work, but again, I'm playing on an arcade one-up cab, so I don't want to have to have a mouse, uh, you know, at the ready and attached to it. Uh, I I want the controllers there. Now, I looked up on Amazon. They do sell USB spinner controls and uh, trackballs, uh, and I do have a USB port available to me on this. So yep. if need be, I probably could build an attachment that went you know, that could like slide onto the the cabinet front or whatever, and then I could can do that. But I haven't gone there yet, um, especially since right. the damn things are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they're not cheap. No, no. I mean, basically, they're ranging from anywhere from you know forty bucks for your basic cheapy deal to hundred bucks for arcade quality. Um. So that's a lot. <laughs> it's it's a chunk of change. Yeah, yeah. That's a chunk of change for something that I'm kind of like, ooh, this is fun, but it's a whim. Um, yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, look, that's, look, worth, worth messing around with, right? Like, <laughs> you got to, otherwise you're never going to not do it. Yeah. You have to give it a go. 
So anyway, here's the Neo Geo titles that also he had already purchased, and these were all legit. Um, people were asking me about them, and I kind of I don't have much of a history with Neo Geo titles. Did Did you play much of those in the arcade yard? Uh yeah, I I did. Uh, Neo Geo back when I was um, playing them was more about um, the shoot 'em ups. There was a yeah. lot of shoot 'em ups and that sort of thing, which is really where the Neo Geo games excel. Um, so I was playing a lot of um, what was the name? Um, Alpha something it was a shoot 'em up. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. The uh, folks in um, Twitch might know what it's called. Um, but the a lot of the shoot 'em ups, there was a lot of odd games on there too, where they're now incredibly popular. Yeah. Um, but back then, they were just like like you could buy the cartridges as an arcade operator for next to nothing because nobody wanted them. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, it was you know it, it was good. I mean, the, it's funny because when I worked in the arcade and we got a Neo Geo machine, it was just kind of like, oh, look, a multicade of knockoff. Alpha Mission. That's what it was, yeah. Oh, Alpha Mission. Okay. Yeah. Because um, there was a lot of fighting games on Neo Geo. And I was like, well, if I want to play a fighting game, I'm going to play Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, not your fighting game. And then, of course, turns out that they cranked up some good fighting games. Um, yeah, King of Fighters, for example. You know, well, that was yeah. like, how many how many, how many, many revisions of that game was there? Like, it's 15, right? Something? So here's what, <laughs> here's what I have of Neo Geo games, uh, for those who are curious. Uh, Art of Fighting 2, uh, Baseball Stars 2, which is actually a lot of fun because it's just the most basic baseball, but it's, you know, slamming home runs, so that's cool. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Blazing Star, which is a shoot-em-up. Uh, Brickinger? Which I have n- never heard of, uh, Guru Mark of the Wolves. I think that's oh, yeah, that thing. Yeah, um, King of Fighters 2002. Uh, the only one that I remember playing was this one, uh, King of Monsters, which is essentially WWF with Godzilla and King Kong. Oh yeah, I remember that. Uh, you know, with King the city, with the city being your your can't your ring. Um, yeah, you used to trash the city. It was great. Yeah, uh, the Last Blade, uh, Metal yep. Slug. Two, three, X. <laughs> yeah. a, lot of, a lot of metal slugs there. Uh, Neo Neo Turf Masters, which is a golf game. Again, simplistic golf, but fun all the same. Uh, Samurai Showdown 2 and 5. Shock Troopers and Shock Troopers 2nd Squad. And then Twinkle Star Sprites, which is also a shoot 'em up but it's a two-player sh- competitive shoot 'em up where That's right. it's split screen, and so you're... Based off what you do on your screen, you're sending baddies to the other person's screen, which is kind of it's like a pu- it's sort of like a puzzle shoot 'em up. It's really odd. It's like the two player mode in Puzzle Bobble where you dump a whole lot of um, orbs from your side and they end up on the other player's side. That's like just such a fun way to play Puzzle Bobble. <laughs> if you've never played a two player version of that, I used to play that heaps with a mate when we had it on PlayStation. Yeah, um, PlayStation One. It's such a fun game to play with two people. So, uh, yeah, so the rabbit hole that I went down, I pretty much have everything that I could ever want to play now uh, that I knew of. And that was my other thing. It was like, look, I have to have actually had some familiarity with this thing to to download. I'm not just going to download for the sake of it. Um, But here's the list, Jared. See if you approve. And you Mm -hmm. on Twitch, you can join in too. Um, Here we go. 1941, 1942, 1943, and 1943 Mark II. So all shoot 'em ups uh you know top scrollers or, or yep. vertical games Verticals. um yep. burger time commando which is oh my god that game it's so frustrating <laughs> mm. i just remember commando just eating my quarters alive and me never even getting past the first level is um, commando a little bit like um uh contra no or operation c as no. it was no known outside of no Japan? it's it's literally think of a shooter, a shoot 'em up. You're the little guy at the bottom going through a jungle, and all the enemies are coming down trying to shoot at you. And but you can kind of circle them and drop grenades and and fire at them. Ah, that yeah, way. right. Um, That's but cool. It's a bullet hell game. No all doubt right, about cool. it. No doubt it's, about it's it. It's bullet hell with a person instead of a ship. It basically, yes. Yeah. Um, and the ability to guide where your bullets are, whereas the ship ones you had to get an upgrade like to shoot sideways. This one, you yes. just angle your guy and you shoot, you know, that way. Oh, yeah, right. Um, there was some, there was some shoot 'em up. Sorry, as a minor distraction, some shoot 'em ups like um, Air Jewel that had a helicopter that allowed you to like angle your shots in a certain mm-hmm. way, 
it was critical to actually beating the game. But yeah, that sounds similar to the Commando. Um, that being said, I will say, folks, I did not download Contra. I looked at the video and realized that was one of those I hated in the arcade. Brutal. So no brutal game. No Konami code for me. Sorry. No. no. <laughs> um, moving on. Uh, Dig Dug, a classic. Uh, Donkey Kong, which was the game I loved as a kid, but suck at and never got good at and still suck mm. at uh donkey, donkey kong is so hard like the 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 precision you have to have to get up those ladders i tried to play in the arcade and so like, how, how do people even get past the first level in this and yeah. yet there are people who can like like um um not blue screen the game but they can like um kill screen the game well yeah and it's I that go, whole documentary king of kong i mean it's let's go far out guys you, you just you, you play too much of this game yeah. <laughs> um, Donkey Kong Jr., which I remember more from ColecoVision than from the arcade, but I love oh, right. Donkey Kong Jr. Um, mm. Final Fight. Everybody knows Final Fight, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, which was... Awesome. It's awesome, but it's also massive quarter suck because oh, it's a quarter operators either. always jacked up the uh, boss bosses so that you could not get through... Even your first boss on one quarter, you would always have to drop another quarter into play. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, because it had to be there, Galaga and Galaxian, because I'm not going to put Space Invaders on, because Space Invaders blows. <laughs> and But you do need the classic ships dropping down, so you might as well go for the uh, upgrade, and that's what I went with with, uh, with those two. Um, right. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, and Mortal Kombat 3. Had to have them. Yes. Uh, <laughs> NBA Jam, NBA Jam Tournament, and NGM Hang Time. Sorry, Arcade 1-Up. I wanted to know if I wanted it. <laughs> and it turns out you do. Well, you know, maybe. <laughs> Speaking of NBA anything, as a, again, because this show is all about tangents, there's a local, a local um, pinball restore that's got a fast break on the floor at the moment and i i think i need to go and play it because it's an amazing specimen it's been beautifully restored <laughs> so yes anyhow, um continue. anyhow continuing <laughs> uh continuing uh cubert which i did not realize was a gottlieb game oh really i think gottlieb it was gottlieb. electronics yeah um yeah. robotron which that game's hard yeah that game is hard uh somebody had asked me if i'd put on berserker and I went, well, that's what Robotron is, but just on steroids. So why would I want to play Berserker when I could just play Robotron? <laughs> and get killed over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then even more on steroids than that is Smash TV, uh, which I also put on here. Um, and, and, and those, I said, screw you, player two, because they have to be played with joysticks. Yes. Um, you can program them in to play with key buttons, but it is makes the game just impossible horrible yeah. yeah and so i was like you know what this is gonna be a case where it's screw having two players i'm gonna have the one player experience with uh and so i did that for robotron and for uh smash tv yep uh and then we have let's see here where am i on my list ah super pac-man i know it's a terrible one but i i had to. what's wrong with it super pac-man is mm. it just looks like ass <laughs> 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 um, right it's not a pretty looking game and the only fun mechanic of it is that some of the pellets make you giant in which case the ghosts can't eat you but you can still traverse the map and then you do have power up pellets all the same which then you can eat them up but the whole point is you're to eat keys and those unlock gates to open up more of the pathways through everything so okay i mean it, it's kind of interesting on that level but but it is not great. <laughs> but any, right. it was more that I needed to have it just for the completionist's sake. Um, fair enough. Fair enough, yeah. Uh, where am I? Oh, Xevious. Oh, Xevious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I downloaded Zaxxon just because. But unfortunately, that's the one ROM that the sound is not supported on. So there's no sound, mm. which kind of... I don't know. It kind of takes something away from it when there's just no audio. It's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's I wouldn't game. play it. I, um, would, I wouldn't play it. And then people started recommending some more, 
until I had a second wave of downloads. And that's why this list is now going back in the alphabet here. Congo Bongo. Do you remember that one from Sega? No, I don't think that. Congo be- Bongo oh, is a 3D Think Donkey Kong. Uh, you're a little jungle guy. Little ape goes through the top. He's throwing down barrels. There's monkeys at various points. So think of it kind of like how uh, Crystal Castle with the the 3D looking pathways with pits, and you're climbing up them and going, and you got to kind of go down and go around, and gonna you know, go up and jump, and I don't know. It's kind of a mixture of a couple of different uh, games of the of the era, but I do remember enjoying that as a kid. Um, I put on Frogger. I hate Frogger, but I got a lot of flack for not putting on Frogger. So I was like, fine, I'll put Frogger on for you people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, same thing with Ghosts and Goblins. I suck at it. I do remember playing it, but I don't get any enjoyment from it. But I got, again, peer pressured into, you got to have Ghosts and Goblins on there. I'm like, okay, fine. Um, yeah, I'll put it on there. I'm not going to touch it. But, yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, Golden Axe, which... I always got confused That's with Gauntlet. Game. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, Golden Axe is good. Golden Axe Two is a little bit better, I think. Mm-hmm. But um, it's still, it's still a great game. A great horizontal beat 'em up. Yeah. Like that, that era of beat 'em ups that um, Konami and um, and all those manufacturers, mostly Konami, they were really into the uh, horizontal beat 'em ups. Um, well, it's funny because a lot of these are already on the Genesis on this machine. Um, right yes he had a lot they, of these uh on there that were of that nature the, the yeah. horizontal beat-em-ups um i remember aliens versus predator in the arcade um, yeah <laughs> i looked i looked at overheat, it overheat overheat <laughs> all the time <laughs> i looked at that as a video because you know me being a huge aliens fan and i saw the video of it and i go i remember this and there's no way in good conscience i can put it on here <laughs> Oh really? You, you, you went into it. I, I can't. I can't get into it. No, it's just right. it's too much of a bastardization. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not true to form. I can't play it. Uh, I put on there a game called Gravatar, which is a vector graphic Atari game uh, that's oh. like mazes, but using right. the asteroid ship kind of mechanics. So right, it's okay. rather difficult <laughs> to <laughs> thrust and not crash and navigate through. And yeah, it's, but I was like, eh, I like some of these vector graphic games. You got to have that going on. Uh, the other gyro- vector graphic game. Oh, it's, oh, the Gyrus? Yeah. Gyro, which is essentially Tempest, but works with the joystick. <laughs> yeah, it does. They had that on the floor at um, Netherworld in one okay. of those bubble cabinets. Yeah, it's like a, a cabinet with like this bubble dome over the top to make it look like you're you're going around the the screen oh, in a, like okay. a globe yeah it's an interesting effect it looks really cool what was the uh vector graphic game you're gonna mention uh so there's a one from atari called stun runner it's a dr- sort of like a driving game um where it, i don't know how it would translate to um arcade because it, it uses two axis of potentiometers so you've got like essentially a steering wheel and then you've also got these triggers that go up and down. Oh, so it's... That, it's that a, emulates it. Right, so that's basically what the Star Wars cabinet is. Uh, sort of, yeah. Um, and it's it's an amazing driving game. It's such a... Like, it's vector graphics, but it's there's something about it that you go, you know, this totally is fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a really wicked game. Um, came in a really nice dedicated cabinet, which I still see floating around. But, um, yeah, cool game. But I don't know how you'd use it. You'd probably have to, like, use two analog sticks for it. Um, well, that's why some of these, like I didn't put Spy Hunter on here because too much is dependent upon that steering wheel. Uh, yeah. With the, you know, how that integrates. So, I mean, you know, there's certain games you just kind of go, go, screw it. It's not worth, I, unless I played it on a controller, in which case I'm like, well, but that's not the point of this cabinet, you know? Yeah, that's right. So, um, Load Runner. I didn't even know that was an arcade cabinet. I only remember playing it on my friend's PC. <laughs> um, I couldn't understand that game at all. Oh, you're so seen... oh my god! In college, I spent so many hours playing Load Runner. Um, no idea how to even play it. Like I, I, I had it. I think I had it at one stage on one of the like 16-bit consoles or yeah. 8-bit. I think it might have even been on our Game Boy. I had it. Oh yeah, totally. And I was going, what? What is this? And like I, I tried to work it out without reading the instructions for five minutes in one of those demo units on in the um 
the retail store. I went, no, nah, I'm not buying this. This is rubbish. <laughs> it's, and yet it's really straightforward. It's go around, collect the little dolls or idols, and that'll give you an escape ladder that escapes the level. You've got little guys chasing and running around after you, and you defeat them by blasting holes into the ground that they fall in, and then you can run over the top of them. So it's a combination of puzzle and uh, collecting and just traversing out of there. I don't know. Uh, yeah, see, that was there's no way it would have worked out that you had to blow holes in the ground to trap the enemies <laughs> and then walk over it. That's like completely alien as a concept. <laughs> it's like, so hang on, I'm supposed to walk over this hole with an enemy in it. Mm, that doesn't seem well, natural the, at all. The, <laughs> well, or you could blast a hole and you could fall through it. So that's how you'd get to lower levels. Right. And the whole it's point, still... though, is, and you get bonus <laughs> points, though, if you don't kill any of the guys. Because if they fall in multiple times into the same hole, the hole will eventually close up, and then it'll spawn somewhere else. But right. the object is to not kill any of them, because you get a massive bonus if you don't. Right. Which is kind of interesting for a video game concept. It's like, no, 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 peace. We want peace. <laughs> you know? Don't um, kill everything. Save everything. Kill everything. Yeah. And just basically, essentially, like, um, it's Metal Gear Solid. You, you're not supposed to kill anyone. You're supposed to just, like, stealthy way through the level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh did uh see i downloaded mappy which is no idea mappy is basically you're a warehouse security guard who's a mouse and cats okay. are trying to steal things or that makes whatever. sense i don't know it's, that sounds exactly what it like what a cat would do <laughs> it's, yeah. it's it's a williams game and you know whatever had to have it uh mario brothers not super mario right. brothers just mario brothers which mario unfortunately brothers. the sound again the sound isn't quite the only thing you hear is you running, but none of the other no. game sounds are in it, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, um, that, that, that is annoying. I got talked into putting Moon Patrol on here. Oh, that thing is nuts. <laughs> that Moon, thing is... Moon I, Patrol I is even... one that I remember from the Apple IIe. That's what I played on that thing. And I looked at the, the video game, and I was like, why would I want this? But somebody was like... You can't have a cabinet without having Moon Patrol on it. I'm like, okay, whatever. Says the person who really, really liked Moon Patrol <laughs> only. I'd, I'd looked at that thing in Netherworld. I went, no way. Like, yeah. <laughs> like number one, like just looking at the the thing that like <laughs> made me laugh was the fact that the demo that they played, the rolling demo that just yeah. plays in the track mode. I'm looking at it going, that's insane. I'm not playing that. It didn't <laughs> entice me into the game at all. I went, I'm not going to be able to beat that. That's way too hard. <laughs> like, yeah. all, it, all it is is just bouncing over holes and shooting enemies that float above you. Whee! Yeah, yeah just, it's, it's only flo jumping and shooting. Yeah, right. You know what and it then, is? You know what it like, is? It kills you. It's, it's in uh, Circus Voltaire, the uh, kangaroo on the, the, yeah. the unicycle. It's that game. Yeah. It's that game. <laughs> and it's about as advanced as that game. Oh, it'd be better than, like, put it this way, Moon Patrol would be better than that video <laughs> mode, that's for sure. But not by <laughs> much. Because that video mode's the worst video mode in pinball, and that's saying something because there's also Harley Davidson version 3. Oh, God. And <laughs> I'd rather play that <laughs> than play Rooney jumping over blobby things because it's just, the it's horrible. Um. Yeah. Oh, uh, Dave yeah. here is is arguing the case for Moon Patrol, saying it's one of his favorite games. But yes, it's way too easy for too long. It doesn't get hard until almost the second loop. Well, that's bad that for loop. operators. <laughs> <laughs> Good for the kid on a quarter budget. Bad for operators. Oh uh, uh, yeah, the kid on a quarter would be stoked with that. But yeah, <laughs> not for the operator who like has a kid sitting on there for an hour. Uh, almost done with the list here. Uh, oh, I've been playing a lot of this uh, NFL Blitz. NFL Blitz oh. 99 and uh, 2000. Uh, All yeah, hard drive know. games. Dude, that I were love in. NFL Blitz. Yeah, th that was the thing. I didn't realize that I had to download an extra piece to link in that it was a hard drive game because I downloaded yeah. ROMs and said, ROMs are working, but nothing was popping up. I was like, what the heck? And then I read further and was like, oh, you got to have this other element too. And that hard drive, that was a problem with that that series of games. Like The hard drives died all the time on them because they were just, you know, Back in the 1990s, when this game was released, you know, hard drive technology was A, expensive, and B, really fragile. So putting a, a, a platter spinning hard drive in an arcade game that's getting bumped around, yeah, not a great idea. No, no. <laughs> so 
Um, moving on, uh, Popeye, which is a n- Nintendo and looks like a Nintendo game. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Punch Out, also Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, Simpsons. Yes, like the side scroller Simpsons. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, Great game. Turtles, come on, tell root me. Root beer tapper. I wanted to just be regular tapper, but the regular tapper wouldn't ROM wouldn't work. So instead of having it say Budweiser on the back, it says root beer tapper. But it's just tapper. Right. Tapper is again one of those that it stressed the hell out of me and I didn't like it, but people no. were like, You gotta have tapper on there. I'm like, okay, fine. Tapper is like that's the one in the arcade that I played once and went, Nope. Nope. <laughs> Too hard. Don't it was like. a, it was another one that I played on the Apple IIe. Truth be told, um, right. okay. You said turtles. Yeah, I put both turtles games on there. Good, excellent work. Uh, and then Tekken three. Yeah, Tekken three. That was like, I, I remember watching the attract mode on that thing constantly when I was working in the arcade back when it was released. It was just everywhere that game. Yeah. You, well, and you it weren't turns an out arcade that unless you had Tekken three, basically. And and of the three being Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and Tekken three, uh, Tekken three I can jump right into and actually do things without knowing how to do them. Whereas the other two, I'm I have to Google to find out what how to do special moves, <laughs> right? Which was always frustrating. So that's why I was kind of like I need Tekken three on here because I think that one I played a lot of that. I enjoyed it and I felt like I was actually doing something. Um, so that was that. But yeah, so in total now there's 76 arcade games on this. That's thing. a fair that's a fair arcade you got in one box there. It is. Uh, it's uh you know, it's a pretty big arcade. And uh when Plus I all the four machines you got in there too. Right. Like, you know. Yeah, all oh no, they jammed into one box. Yeah, jammed into one box. Uh and then I figure once I uh am done borrowing of this and I need to give it back, I'll just delete everything off there before handing it over. Sanitize it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sanitize it. <laughs> yeah. Remove the the filth. The, filth um, the, the internet backed up filth from this game. Yes. Somebody asked me, why don't you have uh, uh... Oh, good God. Why am I just completely drawing a blank on it now? You know what I'm missing. Puzzle game. Dropping down shapes. Uh, Tetris. Tetris. God, I'm like, it starts with a T. <laughs> 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 and I just said, I recognize like it. I recognize Tetris's place in history. I recognize yes. it as being a good game. I recognize its influence on many things. I hate it much the same way that I hate you too and don't want any part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize them as a good band. I recognize them as a quality band. I recognize their influence. Their sound drives me up a wall. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's definitely one of those. The other thing that works that I remember only because it was in the arcade I worked in was Arkanoid, but that definitely requires a track. Yeah, a you track need, the, wheel. the spinner wheel. Yeah, yeah. You, you really do wheel. for that one. It's uh, it's like there was this one guy who had this weird play style with it. So the one that we had had the spinner wheel in the middle and then buttons either side of the wheel. So it was ambidextrous. You could play it with oh, okay. left or right mm-hmm. hand. But this guy crossed his hands over like this and was playing it wheel this way and wheel that way. I don't know why he did it. It was a really weird dude. And I used to always go and watch him do it. And he was a great player. But I go, you're weird, mate. Like, <laughs> you're a and, strange bloke. And no, I'm not putting track and field on this because I don't want to break the machine. <laughs> <laughs> smash those buttons. Well, because I, I was, I asked Jared about if he knew of track and field, and you were like, "What? I don't know that game, right? Isn't that what I showed you the video of?" Or, oh no, no track no. and field. No, you knew no, track no. and field. No, no, no. It was somebody else that I was doing this to, and so I showed a clip of track and field, and they just went, "Holy crap! How did operators, you know, put up they, with that?" And I'm like, they had to have basically a big box of buttons in the machine that they just swap swapped out. The other one that you'd um you wouldn't like either is uh it's a it's a japanese style game called bishbash bishy bashy special bishy ba- and and it, it is it is such an it's classic japanese it is just insane mini games that all you're doing is you're playing with three buttons a red green and blue and in the game they're like these big dome buttons and i don't know how they hold up as well as they do in the arcades because these things like you get drunk people on going, bam, 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 oh, like yeah. just, just smashing them to death. And I just go, I don't know how the domes don't crack and d- crack 
and yeah. disintegrate. But these must be, I don't know, they must have used an experimental plastic that's used in space shuttles or something like that <laughs> on these buttons because they hold up and it is such a fun game to play with three people. You just smash the buttons and have a glorious time. Um, I would, making I would... burgers and, and assembling robots so you go like you know the robots floating on the screen and then you go like red green blue and it goes ching, 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 and it goes big japanese animation and it's <laughs> fantastic because like i would love to have crazy taxi on here but again you need a steering wheel for that That's, oh you do yeah it's and and then uh god i was looking at it tron and discs of tron mm. talk about specialized like not only do you have the joystick and the joystick does turret rotation also and it has the buttons on you know for firing but it's also got an arkanoid spinning wheel <laughs> so, really yeah well and yeah so the, talk it, that's one that uh arcade one up should just commit to <laughs> mm, and just go all in on yeah even though it's kind of a crap game <laughs> like in tron there because there's four different games that you play in tron only two of them do you ever want to play the other two suck um, yeah, so being, no, so be, being you want to play light cycles and you want to play uh, the tanks. The yeah. other two, which is some weird spider web thing, and mm. then Master Control, which is kind of like an Arkanoid style game, but they're both terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and then the the other standalone machine was Discs of Tron, and Discs of Tron is pretty cool. Uh, okay, so if they did that as a as a thing, that'd be that'd be good. And then uh, what was the other one that I was thinking that? You absolutely. I think I'm just thinking that just the driving games that that arcade one up needs to get on those, and start doing some of those. They could uh, get a partnership with Sega, that would be pretty good. Like, oh yeah, uh, I mean, it's just like, if you had two steering wheels on there for those kind of that kind of play, that'd be great. There's a because there's a ton of driving games. Yeah, no, you just imagine having a Daytona in a cabinet. Like it's well, and time. that's just it. You'd have a Daytona. You'd have one that's a Daytona. You'd have one that's a Crazy Taxi. Um, and then, you know, I don't know what the sub games, you know, the other two games are, but there's so many driving games that it would be hard to... to oh, I know what the other game was that I was thinking that there's no way of putting in. Uh, Afterburner. Oh, yeah. Because Afterburner has a very specific... I mean, it's joystick moves. It's a thrusting... Uh, yeah, it's a it's it, a joystick plus a gun plus a it's an analog joystick too. From yes, memory. that's that's like what I'm saying. It's an analog joystick, so it's it's uh, that thing. It's complex. not just a tilt forward well, back. That... It's a full slam it side to side kind of experience. It, it's a it's one hell of a mechanism when you take that thing out. Like it's <laughs> a, it is some serious hardware in that machine yeah. uh, to make that thing work. Yeah. So anyway. Again, for those of you who are curious, that's what's uh, that's what's in the cab now, and I'm still only playing about four games. <laughs> like I said it's it's been a lot of Blitz, it's still a lot of Pac Man, it's still uh, NBA Jam, and uh, that's kind of then it's just whatever whim I kind of go. I tried having my son play a whole bunch of them, and he just kind of went, "Dad, these games suck." <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he goes, he goes. Why would anybody want to play these in an arcade? What was the appeal? And because like, they were there, and that was new. Well, we had a discussion just the other day about what was the appeal of an arcade, and I said, you got to remember, man, parents would just drop you off at these things, and you were now in kid world, unsupervised, yeah. with a roll of quarters. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, it was the best ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I, and then I said, in half the time you were there, you were just watching over somebody else's shoulder because there was no internet. There was no YouTube videos of these being played. If you wanted to learn how to get good, you needed to find a good player and then you needed to glom on them and watch them play. And then I talked about how there was the whole etiquette of, you know, if somebody wanted to play two player with you, well, they're now playing for your quarter unless you lose. And then you, you know, they become the champion of the machine. And people are buying their games for them. I mean, there was that whole etiquette of of play that you went just along don't with get it. these days no yeah no so it's it, so from a discussion point it's been kind of interesting going through all that but it would have been yeah all right did we go off on a tangent enough there jared i think there was definitely some excellent tangential conversations <laughs> happening today so we definitely delivered 
uh, on our mission yes, today. That was that was the <laughs> that was the mission. Um, so again, folks, next week, stay tuned. Hopefully, we'll uh, come on at our regular time for recording. Uh, assuming mm. that the Zen announcement is done before that. Otherwise, we'll delay until after the uh, Zen announcement and then uh, record after that. Yep. But you're going to definitely want to tune in live so that we can uh, get your reactions and comments and uh, stuff of that nature. Yeah. So, um, as usual, we say thank you so much for viewing. We appreciate it. We like having you guys in the comments and uh, joking around with us. And as you already pointed out, if you give us a comment on Twitter... If you uh, drop us a note on YouTube in the comment section there, I will always try and uh, do some kind of response. Happy to have the dialogue with you guys. Uh, mm. Beyond that, Jared? Um, what do we got? Next episode? Well, it's, it's gonna be... most likely going to be targeted stuff and things. I was going to but... say, it's not going to be general stuff and things. But it'll be, it'll be stuff and things, for sure. Like, it has to be. All right. <laughs> He says it, that's what it is. All right, folks, until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye.